Hello, this is Miss Moore, and today during chemistry, we're going to discuss gases and pressure. Today's essential question, what is pressure and how is it measured? We'll start with a quick overview of what elements exist naturally as gases. So hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, and the noble gases, um, which is the group 8A or 18 elements, helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, and rhenon, all exist as gases under normal conditions. Furthermore, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and chlorine are all gaseous diatomic molecules. Remember diatomic meaning those atoms that are, are never alone, right? They have to be hooked up with somebody else or hooked up with themselves. The noble gases are monatomic gases, meaning they can be alone. So in the gas state, helium is just helium. Neon is just neon, unlike the diatomic elements where H2, N2. You would never write just H. Bad has to be H2. Next up, molecules that exist as gases. And actually our first one is the mo molecules that do not exist as gases. All right, so ionic compounds do not exist as gases because of the strong electrostatic forces that, hmm, forgot a word here, that hold the cations and anions together in an ionic solid. Okay, so you will never have an ionic compound that exists in the gas state. Okay? Some molecular compounds, carbon monoxide, carbon di dioxide, ammonia, CH4, NO2, these exist as gases under normal conditions. Furthermore, most molecular compounds um, are actually normally in the liquid or solid state under normal conditions, except for some of the ones we just listed. However, molecular compounds can be converted to gases with the addition of heat. And they can be converted to gases relatively easily compared to the ionic compounds. On to some physical properties of gases. So first up, we have gases assume the volume and shape of their containers. Okay, so w whenever you put a gas in a container, it will fill up the entire container and it will take the shape of a container. Even if you put one single gas molecule in a sealed container, gas molecules move, they move constantly, which is why they fill up the whole container. So even one little molecule could fill up the whole container, right? Because it can just bop around and hit all the edges. Gases are compressible, okay? That means you can squish them. You can squish the gas, the gases, not each individual molecule, but the gas as a whole into a smaller and smaller space. Gases mix evenly and completely when confined to the same container. So if I were to mix two different gases, okay, say oxygen and, and nitrogen, I don't know, whatever, in a container, the whole container is completely filled evenly with oxygen molecules and nitrogen molecules. And gases have a low density compared to that of liquids and solids. And that's because they take up all the space, right? They're moving around. There's lots of space between them. So they're much less dense than a liquid or a solid. Um, and just so you know, later in the unit, we'll go back and talk about um, something called the kinetic molecular theory, which helps explain the physical pro these physical properties of a gas. Let's move on to pressure. So what is pressure? Definition of pressure is the weight or force that is produced when something presses or pushes against something else. Pressure in terms of a gas is the force exerted per unit area by gas molecules as they strike the surfaces around them. So think about it as, as a molecule is hitting the surface of, I don't know, a balloon or a container, um, you're actu it's actually pressing or pushing against that container, right? So we're still talking about pressure. So here's a little equation here. Pressure, P stands for pressure, is force divided by area 
or F over A, with, which means force divided by area. So each collision by a single gas molecule exerts only a really small force. However, when, when we have a, a sample of gas molecules, we don't have one gas molecule, we have lots of them. So when forces of many collisions of many particles are summed, they add up really quickly. You end up with a much bigger force. And the result of constant collisions between the atoms or molecules of a gas and the surface around them, that, that is pressure. So now, what units can we have for pressure? Well, the SI, or Standard International Unit for Pressure, is the Pascal, or PA. Other pressure units include the kilopascal, kPa, the uh, atmospheric pressure, which we write as ATM, millimeters of mercury, or mmHg, and that can also be tor. And then another one is pounds per square inch, or PSI. Now there's a relationship, um, or if you want to think of it as a conversion factor, between these pressure units. And it's written right here, 1 atm equals 760 millimeters mercury. Hmm, forgot a little equal sign here. Equals, in the wrong spot, let's try this again. 1 atm equals 760 millimeters mercury equals 760 tor equals 101.325 kPa equals 101.325 Pa equals 14.7 PSI. We can use this relationship to convert between units, pressure units, and you're going to find out later in the unit that that's actually something we're going to need to do. So let's try that real quick. Let's say I had a pressure of 264 PSI, but I needed to know what that was in TOR. So we just set up a quick little math problem here, unit conversions. We have 264 PSI over 1. And then we can use the equality of 14.7 PSI and 760 tor. We'll put 14.7 PSI on the bottom so that our units cancel out and 760 tor on the top. And we can then calculate our pressure, our PSI pressure in TOR. And I calculated a TOR pressure of 13648.9795 TOR. And then of course we have to look at sig figs. Um, because this equality are all not mathematically measured, but calculated. We don't need to use those. They're, they're all um, constant, I guess you could think of them. So we're just going to use that we have three here. So we're going to keep these three. So we're going to have one, three, six, and we need placeholders for the last two digits before the decimal. Tor. So 264 PSI is the same as 13600 Tor. Um, and you're going to find later in the unit that you'll be doing that quite a lot. So how is pressure measured? Um, something we need to know how to do. For example, you know how to measure temperature, right? Use a thermometer. You know how to measure volume. You use a graduated cylinder. You know how to measure mass. You use a balance. But how do you measure pressure? So let's start with atmospheric pressure. Um, so the definition of atmospheric pressure, it's the pressure exerted by Earth's atmosphere. Atmospheric pressure is equal to the weight of the column of air above it. And we use something called a barometer to measure atmospheric pressure. 
So let's see if we can kind of get an idea of how this works. What we have here is a barometer. And um, the way it's set up is we have a dish. If you can read that, there's a dish down here that's filled with mercury. And then there's a, there's a glass tube right here. This is our glass tube that's in the, inside the dish containing mercury. The this part here is closed, it's sealed. You can't see the bottom, but there's an opening down here, okay? There's an opening inside the mercury, the dish with the, inside the, the glass tube sitting in the mercury. Okay, so the tube, I can't draw, but if I could, the tube looks like this, okay, with the, with the dish with the mercury inside, okay? And as air is pushing down onto this, onto the mercury, it pushes the mercury up the tube. And then to get the atmospheric pressure, you measure the height. So right here, we're measuring the height of the mercury in the tube and that will give us atmospheric pressure. Here they're measuring the height in centimeters. Um, you can measure it in millimeters, whatever, okay? So that is one way to measure pressure, and in this case we're actually measuring atmospheric pressure, so the pressure of the atmosphere of the air on the Earth at a specific location. Another way to measure pressure is using a manometer. And this measures the pressure of gases other than atmospheric pressure. Um, and there are two types, of, so here's a quick picture of a manometer. We'll talk about it in just a moment. Um, there are two basic types of manometers. There is a closed tube, which is used to measure pressure below atmospheric pressure. And then there's the open tube manometer, which is used to measure pressure above atmospheric pressure. So now let's kind of talk about how this thing works. All right, so a quick description on how this manometer would work. Um, in this bulb here, we have some gas under high pressure. And here we have the atmospheric pressure, right? That's the atmospheric pressure. So we open this stop. This is a stopcock right here, keeping this gas from coming out of the tube. You open the, the stopcock and the gas starts flowing in this way, and then the atmosphere, the, the, the pressure from the atmosphere is flowing in this way. So now what we need to do is we look at the height difference between the two sides of this U, so between here and here, and that can help us determine the pressure of the gas. So this blue stuff here is mercury, and whichever, whichever gas has the highest pressure is going to push the mercury away from it. So in this particular case, the gas in our tube has a higher pressure than the atmospheric pressure. So this is pushing the mercury up. That was not a very good color. Let's try this again. It's pushing the mercury up this way, which means that our gas has a much higher pressure than the atmospheric pressure. And we can measure the height difference here, which we don't have to do, just I want to have you understand how it works, to see what exactly the, the pressure of the gas is. Okay, so now, if the gas was at a lower pressure than the, than the atmospheric pressure, the, let's get rid of all this junk here, it's a mess. If, the, if this gas was at a lower pressure than atmospheric pressure, then our mercury would be higher on this side and lower on this side, meaning that the atmospheric pressure is winning the push the mercury fight, okay? So believe it or not, folks, that's it for today. Have a good one.